my name is Ozzy. This is a Pi Zero powered robot. It looks quite complicated but it's actually quite simple. Today we will be showing you the basics of building a robot. Here is an assortment of lots of different components needed to make a robot. Here is a Raspberry Pi Model 2. These here are the brains of the robot. You need one of these to control it. You can also use a Raspberry Pi Model B, which is the first, which is one of the first models of Pi, or Raspberry Pi Zero, which is good for small projects. You need to use motors to control your robot. You, you could have different types of servo motors. This type is quite easily come to come by and is quite cheap. Or you could have, this is another type of servo motor which is quite small and skinny. You could even have a stepper motor which you can control the movements quite precisely. To power the Raspberry Pi, you could just use a normal phone power bank or you could use a LiPo. They are quite small batteries which last for a good while. If you just power the motors from a Raspberry Pi, they won't go as fast as if you power them from a separate power source like a battery pack. Most basic robots can just drive around and everything. If you want to make your robot better, you could add on extra features like ultrasonic eyes, which could stop it from d colliding into obstacles. The most important thing in the robot is the H-bridge. This allows you to reverse the polarity of the motors. This means you can drive them in both directions. You could have them built into atom balls like this. Or you could just have them singular like this. Here is a simple way of thinking about an H-bridge. The H-bridge is in red. We call it a H bridge because it looks a bit like an H. If you wanted the motor to spin that way, you would close switch 1 and switch 4 and keep switch 2 and switch 3 open so the voltage would run like this. But if you wanted the motor to spin the other way, you would close switch 2 and switch 3 and open switch 1 and switch 4 so the voltage would run like this The L9110 that we're using has two H bridges on it so to control two motors but today we're only going to use one of them because we only need to control one motor Here is what you will need for to wire up your H bridge. You should you will need one Phillips screwdriver and one flat end, a battery pack, a breadboard, a connector, four jump leads, one motor and one wheel, and a H bridge. Step one is wiring the motor to the H-bridge. You will need your motor and your wheel, the H-bridge, 
and a flathead screwdriver. What we're going to need to do is wire the wires into the H bridge. It doesn't matter which way round you put the wires. You're going to have to screw the you're going to have to screw the screws to lock the wires in place. Step 2 is connecting the battery pack to the connector and the breadboard. You will need for this step your fillet screwdriver, the battery pack, the breadboard and your connector. It's easier to do it without the batteries in. We're gonna we're gonna, basically gonna do the same thing we did with the motor and the H bridge, but instead using a Phillips screwdriver. Once again it doesn't matter which way round you put the wires in. Once you've wired it in, you need to place it, place your connector onto the breadboard. Make sure the breadboard is that way and you're connecting it in there. Step three is to connect the battery pack to the H bridge using two jumper wires. To do this, you need to connect the jump wires into the breadboard. Then, you need to connect the red wire to the pin which says VCCA and the black wire to the pin which says GRND which stands for ground. Step four is to is the final step. What we do is connect two female to female wires into the, from the H bridge to the Raspberry Pi. You should you need to use the left of the H bridge. We're going to use pin 14 and pin 15, but you can use any you can use any GPIO zero pins. Now that all these wired up the circuit and we've put the batteries in, we can we need to start coding the motor. First, you need to import the GPIO. Zero library, which helps us to code the motor easily. From the Jupyter Zero library, we need to import the motor module. And after that, we need to import the time. We need to import the time module, which will allow us to delay the motor so that it can stop while and just keep on going forever. After that, we need to set the motor. The, the, to the pins we're using. In this case, we're using pins 14 and 15.
next we need to tell the motor to go forward which is very simple using GPRISO you just need to do, use the name that you called the motor then you need to write dot forward on the end of it and then, then in open brackets you need to write the speed in this case I'm setting it to 0 0.5 then we use the time module to make it delay 3 seconds so that it only spins for 3 seconds instead of forever. And then we just need to stop the motor and then our code is finished. Then we need to run it by clicking F5, save it. Then it will run. So today we have been wiring up one motor. Next time we will be thinking about wiring up another motor and adding more code to make two motors run. For now, bye! Then what we need to do is screw the screws to keep the wire in place. <laughs> the L... <laughs> Wait, uh... Oh, Ozzy, be quiet!